And it hit me right after we talked. The reason why I was feeling that frustration and that friction was because I was trying to do my will and his will at the same time. Mm. And you can't. So the only way that you get tension if you have like resistance bands is because two things are going in opposite direction, yep. which creates tension. Yep. So to release the tension, that means you have to let go of something. Mm-hmm. He loves us so much that he gave us the choice to let him go. Welcome to the Godbolt Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Godbolt, with my beautiful wife, Jade Godbolt. We believe that marriage God's way is the most powerful catalyst towards healing and holiness for you and everybody after you. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are kicking off this season a little bit different. We are actually going to be interviewing each other. I thought it would be fun to ask each other questions about the state of our marriage, where we... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, <laughs> <laughs> where we are, uh, and really be more self reflective. Like, I'm your wife, obviously, but answering these things with a focus on you and where you are at internally and spiritually, mm. not necessarily bouncing off of me, but more so revealing what's on your heart and on your spirit about your role as a husband, as a father. And the leader of our household and those kinds of things. So I'm going to kind of put on my interviewer hat and ask you questions that you probably know I know, but I think questions that people would be interested to hear the answers okay. to. So there's going to be like, epi- like an episode of this or? Yeah. So the this next is episode about is going to be about you? Yeah. Okay, bet. So this is about all about wow. Mark. Didn't know about this one, guys. I knew it was gonna be an interview, but I didn't know it was gonna be like <laughs> it's gonna be which an I guess that's why like you. I couldn't it wasn't I couldn't like, you know, think about what to talk about or anything. Yes. Like, I, now I, every episode is not necessarily gonna be like this, but this no. is what I felt led to start off the season with. Yeah. So well, That's why I have to do my repent. Sheesh, alrighty then. <laughs> he be knowing. <laughs> he be knowing. Okay. So what would you describe this season of your life as being a husband? Mm. I am learning how to walk in being a son and the implications of that with everything around me, which starts off with you and then our children. The click down to that right now is patience. And patience has just been so just, there are seasons where I can feel when like the Holy Spirit is like really trying to get something to me. And it's not through um, intensity or anything like that. It, it, it's literally like I see a consistent pattern of this gentle guidance towards something. So in the, in season one, we talked about indirectly, but we talked about that for me being for a season service Mm -hmm. and these lessons that I don't quote unquote graduate from, but they just become tools in my quiver tools in my tool belt that I can like, that I am now expected to be able to use consistently and have faith through experiences that they're going to work when I put them into play. Give us a little bit of tangible physical story or how did that happen that's coming well give us a since you mentioned the service season because that was a season and i think that breaking up your role in these ways is very good for you and i think good for me too because it kind of gives us this guiding spirit of it in in whatever we're doing and it allows me to kind of hold you accountable as well. And I watch for these things. Like I know patience is like a thing for you right now. I knew that service was a thing for you back then. And so I was able to actually watch you walk these things out, knowing that you were trying to grow in that area specifically. So there were times, even in the service season, when I would 
not necessarily create an opportunity for you to serve me. But when you did serve me, even if I didn't praise you in that moment, I would make a note in my mind to communicate my appreciation more. And actually that helped me get into a cadence of actually like vocalizing my appreciation for what you do on a regular basis because I wasn't that person before. I, unless you did something incredible, I wasn't really saying anything because I just had that, you know, that was part of like who I used to be. But yeah. when you communicate where you are, even if we don't fully understand why God has you walking through that season, it's been helpful for me from a support standpoint to know that like, okay, God has given you this message that like, this is your study focus for this season. And yeah. so tell us a little bit about what it was like when service was, and real quick, cause I really want to yeah, like yeah. jump into the patients yeah. and kind of where we're at <clears throat> now, but I want to give people an idea of like how it kind of works for you. Yeah. So, so that I can remember the last three going to include the season I'm in right now. It was service. It was um, present, not patience. And service was all around me stepping outside of myself without getting anything in return. I've always been a giver. Mm -hmm. And the world, you know, being in corporate America taught me um, networking and like, I'm going to give this to you now because later I may need something, whether it's for me or someone else, but it's there's something behind why I'm doing it. And the service um, lesson was all about if you don't receive anything, but I told you to do it, will you do it? It's selfless. It's humbling. It's truly understanding what love is. Because it wasn't about me getting anything from you. It was strictly about, well, I'm supposed to lead and love and be gentle what and be did compassionate that look like? with. Huh? What did that look like? So that looked like everything from, um, um, well, at that time, it was for, or started as two weeks, then went to a month, then went to a, to this day. Whatever she asks you to do, do it as if you are happy to do it. So there will be times where I would either say no or I would do it, but begrudgingly doing it. So like, I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. And it's crazy because I even think about that to this day of like, wow, I really, I've said this to you before, I thought I was fooling God because we can do things. And we're thinking that like, well, I'm doing it, so that should be enough. But heart matters. And you couldn't see my heart. I mean, sometimes I made it very obvious, but then there were other times that it wasn't so obvious. And the only person who knew how I really felt about whatever I was doing was our father. So so, so this taught me to not just um, care more about you, but also to care more about how he feels about me in a real way. So that, you know, you would, babe, can you make me a sandwich at 11 p.m. at night after I just took all my clothes off and laid in the bed and it's cold and all of these things, which you still do. But <laughs> now I can just do it versus before maybe I would have said no or maybe I would have like – um Huffed and puffed. Huffed and puffed. Or maybe I would have said something to make you feel bad about a even asking me to do it. So then you would rescind the ask. Like all of those things are forms of manipulation to get it back to what I truly desire versus actually getting to a place of not my will, but your will be done. So th that was the service part. Then the the present part was like, Okay, now there's a new norm for me. So now it's like I I'm used to getting up every single day and you know going to a job for 12 hours, but that's no longer my reality. So what do I do now? And it was a lot of studying, a lot of inner work, a lot of spending time with the father for real. And 
it was always just like, well, this is just going to be for three months. or this is just going to be for a limited time. Or later I'm going to be able to do this. And later I'm going to be able to do that. And that may be the case. But while I'm looking ahead, I can't actually do fully what is in front of me. I can't honor the season that I'm in if I'm looking at the next season because I'm not there. I'm here. Mm -hmm. So that would show up in so many things to where I wouldn't have been able to heal the way that I'm healed today at all had it not been for me being present. I didn't even realize what that was doing for me with our children. So like not being able to have that with my oldest daughter because um, I was 19 and me and her mom lived in separate places and that was just a whole thing. Then I would move from New York to Texas, from Texas to Oregon, Oregon to Texas. So it's like I never had that time to fully be present. Even when I was with her, I always felt like I'm still trying to establish myself and see what's next in school and working through jobs. There was always some, where I'm going to stay, how I'm going to deal with the abuse. There was always something that was distracting me, both good and bad, from being present with her. That I didn't get to establish and instill the things I get to do in the other children because of not being present. So... After getting that under my belt, well, here comes patience because you can't be patient without being present because part of the reason why we can't be patient is because we're looking ahead is because I want you to do this now. So how do I be patient with a wife that's not in my head to know what I'm thinking, what I want done, why I want it done with children that are even still learning how to listen, how to obey. So like, being able to be patient with them and then with people like now I run a Bible study, um, the memo, and it's so much more than a Bible study. Now it's like this group of men who now we are righteous community for each other. And we're all in different paths and different places. And some of them look up to me as a leader being married and having the kids and doing all the things spiritually even, but they're in different places too. So, how can I lead without there being this expectation that you are like me, that yeah. you are doing things the way I would do things? But when you ask me for guidance or assistance, which is you really asking for the spirit that is operating in me, how do I move Mark out of the way so that I can give you what the Holy Spirit wants me to give you for where you are? You can't do that without patience. So that's why patience has been overwhelming, because even in season one of the podcast, I was not, you know, spiritually guiding no one really but myself and y'all through my actions. And as I've grown in that, the Holy Spirit has brought more men to see that, to experience that. And it's like they'll like they tell me all the time, like Mark, stay repentant, because like we know that if we need to hear confirmation from something the Holy Spirit has shared with us, we can come talk to you and know that we're not going to get Mark. We're going to get the Holy Spirit through Mark. That has come from patience. That's so good. And I think you touched on a lot of things, but the first thing I want to speak on is actually being present. And it's interesting how actually each one of these things ha tie together because I didn't even notice it until talking about it now. Like, whoa. It, it's so. So interesting how God has a purpose in each season that he takes you through, right? And it's not until you get a little bit farther down the road that you can actually look back and see how everything has been so connected and very purposely connected when you actually obey the call of each season because it's going to change. Yep. It's going like you went from working in this corporate setting being the guy and going out there and bringing home money and all that kind of stuff, then our world shifts and now you are at home with the kids. You're essentially a stay-at-home dad. And at the same time, you are trying to figure out what is it that you're supposed to be doing. And because of the way we've grown up and the way the world sees things is that, well, I've got to be in an occupation in some way, shape, or form, and being at home and serving my family 
isn't enough. Isn't enough. And think about this too. Like, um, it's wild because, like, when Christ talks about renewing your mind, being born again, I couldn't have or not putting new wine or wine skin because that's what I tried to do. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't working. And there was like, honestly, more friction. Um, because you had the, you were trying to bring a Nike mindset into God Bolt, the brand. Nike, and but, but even that, but it, even what God Bolt, the brand started as mm-hmm. to what it's growing into and what it's going to continue, like the revelations that we've gotten even as of two weeks ago, it's wild because I wasn't, I was trying to bring just the world period Mm -hmm. into what God was asking me to do. Yeah. And that was why I was always thinking that nothing that I was doing was enough because of what I was measuring it up against. That was not God's measurement. Yeah. That's so, so, that's so true because we literally will measure God things against world things. They don't compare. They don't. They cannot compete. Yeah. And people in the world won't understand. So yeah. If you're looking to them, that's why it's so important to have righteous community. Yeah. Because if you're looking to people that are, in the world, they're only going to have to give to you what they're experiencing. Yeah. So if I was to look to other men in the world, they would, you know, and I had some friends who understood or who, even if they didn't understand, they were um, um, encouraging. Yeah. Supportive. Because they knew me. they like, yo, we know Mark. Mark has been, I've been working since I was 15 years old, uh, like nonstop. I was I would brag about working twenty five hour days like that was a thing for me. I was going to Nike early in the morning. And you would ask me like, "Do you have to go to early?" I'm like, "Yeah, I do," but I didn't. But I did because work like all I knew was work. Mm-hmm. So coming out of that, and God was trying to usher me and guide me out of that, but I was still hanging on to what I knew, to what was comfortable, to what I saw around me, to what the world told me was. This is what a man is. Especially when it works for the world. Especially when it works. Because and, you yeah. obviously, none of us pursue anything without desiring the thing to be successful. Yet, like we just said, you cannot measure God things against world things. And when you are looking at the world to see where you fit or where you stand, you will be disappointed because the fruit of the world looks different than the fruit of the kingdom. And I think I wish somebody would have told us this like back then, because I think it would have helped give us some relief of the pressure we felt because we're walking into a new space, knowing that God bolt was supposed to be something God focused, right? Like God bolt is our last name legally, but God bolt the brand wasn't always God focused. It was Mark and his creativity and like what he wanted to do but in the clothing space. But think about this though. I don't mind that we didn't have it because if we would have had it, then we wouldn't have had this journey that taught it to us through experience so that we can share with others. On top of that, the reason why we didn't is because we were supposed to obey. Like, this hit me. um, We had our first memo men's trip, and I took Micah. And it was on a farm, and we had all these plans to, you know, fish and, and ride a horse, just do a lot of different things. But, you know, Micah's first time, being away from his family, being away from his sister, being away from you um, for for, a week. A, for an extended period of time. Yeah. And, you know, being in the car for 20 plus hours and all of that. And he's he was just about two. He, w- he wasn't even two yet. Yeah. And we, we, we get there and he, midway through, he's like, I'm ready to go home. I miss my mommy. And his response to this feeling is to cling to the closest thing to home he has and that's me which meant that I couldn't do all of the things and the first time when that really hit me and became a reality it was hard for me to get past I called you I was frustrated I talked to one of the other homies I was there I was frustrated 
and I got exactly what I needed, you said that he needs you. That's your first priority there. So whatever that takes, he needs you. And then right after that, one of my friends called and he's like, you know, talking to me about the cows and all the stuff that they're doing and needing help. But he also, um, um, I started to share with him our conversation and it hit me right after we talked. The reason why I was feeling that frustration and that friction was because I was trying to do my will and his will at the same time. Mm. And you can't. So the only way that you get tension, if you have like resistance bands, is because two things are going in opposite direction, yep. which creates tension. Yep. So to release the tension, that means you have to let go of something. So I'm, I said that to say, not having someone tell me about that taught me that there was tension during that time to where I couldn't be present, to where I couldn't be patient because during that time, I was still trying to do my will. Yeah, I just dressed it as God's will for me. And it was clear through that tension that something ain't clicking here. Yep. So we'll have tension in life and we'll just say, oh, it's just this season. Or, oh, it's just this. It's like, no, it's not God's will that we have tension. So if there's tension there, that means there's something that we're trying to do that is opposite to what he's trying to do through us. And we have to let something go. Mm-hmm. We have that. He's given us the choice to. He loves us so much that he gave us the choice to let him go. So. That season was teaching me and really teaching us through me to let. My will go. Yeah. And I also think that that season helped you release whatever selfishness that was still living in you. Because I I feel like as a woman, as a mother, I went through that when I had Sarai, when I had our first daughter, was that I did not realize becoming a mother would be so much about serving another person. I never thought of motherhood that way before I became a mom. I just thought, oh, you have this cute little mini you and like you do things together. You, of course, you're going to have to bathe them and, you know, feed them and, you know, all the things, but you really don't understand how much selfishness is in you. And it's not a bad thing. It's just there's a season for it before you have. A, a husband before you have kids before you are in that that role as a I mean, wife then or a it's mother. Not selfish though. It's it's you, but you know, it's, taking care of yourself or looking right. out for yeah. Well, and but even that though, I I would say truthfully, I was selfish. Well, you were selfish. <laughs> yeah, like right. I was. It was beyond just yeah. like taking care of myself. Yeah. It was I saw things that I wanted for myself, and I went out and I got them. And I wasn't really concerned about God's plan for me. Like, as long as it kind of like was around what I was doing, I well, we 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 oftentimes will like merge God's plan for us with success. Yeah, exactly. So if like, if as things long as are it's working, working, oh, that means God doing it. It's like yeah, no, and that, that's, that's not, not necessarily the case. Yeah. And that's why you know you, we can get so confused in certain seasons when we're not spiritually tapped in because yeah. In order to know when a season comes to an end and a new season starts, you got to be connected with the Father for Him to tell you where you are because the season of selfishness, quote unquote, ain't selfish when you are living by yourself and taking care of all your needs by yourself and X, Y, and Z, but it becomes selfishness when now you are in companionship, in marriage, in motherhood, parenthood, and you're still thinking about yourself, but there's other people around you, especially for you as a husband, because you were called, once you became my husband, you stepped into a role of putting all of us before you. Literally. And that was a season where that service, that real lesson of service had to be like hammered into you and you took it and and you 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 appreciated God walking you through that lesson and of a know, season. You know what's crazy too and I really I get emotional thinking about it because um I know 
No one knows the me that I was at Nike better than me. And I know that if I was still there, I wouldn't have been able to have that lesson. Because everything I was doing, everything that I thought I was doing, even in the selfishness, was for everybody else. Mm. Like, I really thought that. It was like, I thought I knew best. I didn't even have the wherewithal to think about things spiritually. It was, I was taking everything that I thought I learned in the world, the examples that I compiled to make it myself, because we do need guidance. We do need community. We need relationships. That is very true. So because we need them, if we're not getting them from God, Satan sees that as a prime opportunity to insert whatever he desires. So now it's like, now I've shaped all of these things based on a a legitimate need, but it's me doing it. So thinking back to thinking back now on like all of the, the lessons that seemingly happened spiritually, they were after the obedience to leave. And if it wasn't for that, those lessons don't come because there wasn't space for them. Yeah. There wasn't space for me to even think about, like, I, I was at capacity still needing more then, more time, more space, all of these things. So, like, adding on a marriage, more children, like. It feels too much. Like, it feels like you can't. Because you're busting your butt at work and you are trying to do all the things, trying to get all the new iPhones that come out and do all the trips every year and go to everybody's thing and do all the things that the idea of getting married to somebody feels like, eh, that's a bit much. It's like, you know, and you under somehow we innately understand the weight of those types of decisions. So we see the weight and we're like, yeah, I, I'm not ready. How many times do we hear people say, I'm not ready for that yet? Mm-hmm. I'm not. When that's actually the very thing that will that we unlock. Need, yeah, that gives that, that like marriage, marriage was created in Eden, kids were created in Eden. So we're talking about marriage, our companionship, and everything that comes with that, and then parenthood. But those are the two things that we say. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Or I don't know if I if can some, afford it. And it's crazy because when I was in Nike, if somebody would have been like, hey, Mark, why don't you go for this senior? As a matter of fact, one time I went, I had a really good presentation and I was in product creation and merchandising was like, you know, his presentations are incredible. You want an interview for this merchandising role? And like on paper, that is a crazy jump. But in my mind, I'm like, oh, yeah, more money, more let's go. I said that to say we take those types of jumps without even thinking. Mm-hmm. Somebody was like, oh, I'm a, here's a job to pay $250. Bet. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Let me cram in as much study <laughs> as I can about this I don't care what thing. I got to do. I don't care what I got to do. But as it pertains to being a husband, to being a father— a wife, a mother, we're like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. It's just ironic. But that's where I was. And at the same time, as stark of a contrast as that is, and I think as stark of a reality that is for so many people our age, if you are a millennial or close to millennial, you get this. Like there is, we've all hit the point in life where it's like, okay, if you ain't having kids yet or if you're not getting married yet, there's a good chance that it's not going to happen for you. That's yeah. the reality we start facing as we get older because it's all cute when we're in you know, high school, mid-20s, you out here reaching your potential and all this kind of stuff. And you're cruising that in that world where you're finally getting some money in your pocket and you're doing some things and – Then it's like, well, yeah, I'm going to wait till I'm in my 30s to like do like the wife and the mother type stuff or whatever. But the caveat to that is it's harder the more you know of the world and what it's like to be in singleness. It's 
harder. Yeah. And what happens is God has to take dr- more drastic measures to help you understand what you are going to need in order to be the wife, the husband, the mother, the father that he needs you to be for the children and the people around you. Because it's not just about you and your success. It's mm-hmm. about everyone that you come in contact with and everyone that you are attached to. So if you don't do well in relationships, how are you going to be able to impact with God's will in mind and at the forefront? How are you going to make true impact in other people's lives? And how does anyone make a divine impact in your life if you don't have those types of relationships? Because it's not just about you pouring out. It's also about you being able to receive. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the God Bolt Life podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us a DM or leave us a review wherever you're listening. We really appreciate having you with us on this journey.